Well, thank you very much for that introduction and also for inviting me to speak today. It's really interesting coming to an energy conference when I've been to quite a lot of mining conferences and we have the same conversations. And I think a lot of it stems from, there's a real, one of the biggest problems that the mining industry is facing is the real disconnect between the public realizing how much we need these raw materials and what the industry is actually doing. And it's, it's interesting to see the same here. Um, I don't need to introduce myself now because Marit did such a nice job. So if anybody would like to read the disclaimer later, you're very welcome to. Very briefly, Cornish Lithium are a young startup, well, two and a half years old now, and we are looking for lithium within geothermal waters in Cornwall. And we now have 13 geoscientists and we're based down there. And we're actually gonna be drilling our first kind of research boreholes to test this concept that there are geothermal waters circulating at depth. They're within these permeable geological structures and they've got lithium in them. And we're gonna be doing our first couple of boreholes, just two holes down to one kilometers depth <gasps> and our rig's supposed to arrive on site next week. So it's all happening, which is very exciting. So I wanted to start with this slide here, which is probably preaching to the choir, um, but I've been involved in quite a lot of outreach events recently. And we'll go along and people will come up to us and say, oh, we don't really need mining now. We'll say, oh, well, you know, have you got a mobile phone? we will say, yeah. And um, two thirds of the elements from the periodic table are in your average smartphone. Those will come from a whole suite of mines, and that's just a mobile phone. So as we decarbonize the, the economy, as we use more high-tech applications, as we've got this burgeoning middle class that's growing around the world, we need to be mining more raw materials to support that than we have done in the past. And to put that into context, in the last 5,000 years, we've mined about 550 million tons of copper. We need to mine that in the next 25 years to facilitate society's growth and transitioning to a low carbon future. Ta-da. So <laughs> lithium itself is a lightweight metal. It's got a high charge density. So if you want a lightweight portable battery, like in a mobile phone, a laptop or an electric car, it's great. The first lithium ion battery was actually commercialized in 1991. So it's a fairly new thing. Tin and copper, we've been mining for thousands of years. We know where to find it. We know how to extract it and process it. Whereas lithium, because the demand, the projected demand for it is so great and ever increasing. I mean, the World Bank estimate that by 2050, we're going to need 965% more lithium than was produced two years ago. So for the mining industry, it needs to start looking at new, new deposit types and new locations. And it's a big job. So it's becoming a critical metal because of this role it's gonna play in battery storage and in electric cars. There we go. A Tesla Model S, for example, has about 10,000 times the amount of lithium in it than a mobile phone battery. So that's just driving home the point that we need a lot of lithium. And so this is interesting. So where was lithium actually produced over the last couple of years? And you can see that Australia has produced a lot from hard rock. Um, Chile and Argentina, and actually Bolivia as well, formed the Lithium Triangle, and a lot of lithium is produced from salty salar brine deposits. But what's really key here is the lack of any real production in Europe or North America, which is currently where a hell of a lot of the demand is. So hard rock, there's a picture of a hard rock mine. It's, you know, you drill it, you blast it, you crush it, and you get the lithium out. This is a picture of a salar deposit in South America, and they rely on solar evaporation. So in arid areas such as the Atacama Desert, you get these very salty fluids forming. So you put boreholes down, they're generally no more than 200 meters deep, pump them up to the surface, and then they enter these evaporation ponds. Now, digging these evaporation ponds is quite a big output. I mean, just to give you an idea of scale, from the front of that image to the back is about five kilometers. And Lithium really likes to stay in compound, so everything else evaporates off and the lithium gets more and more concentrated until after about 18 months or two years, you've got a really salty brine. That then goes into a processing plant to form something like lithium carbonate. But that then has to be shipped to somewhere like China to refine it into battery grade lithium chemicals. These battery grade lithium chemicals might then be shipped to 
Korea to be built into batteries, which will then, when we've got a bigger electric car industry, be shipped to Europe, for example, to go into the electric car. So that's a hell of a carbon footprint from one, e one element before the car's even been driven a mile. And one of the big problems with this is, yes, it's relying on solar evaporation, which is cheap, but over 80% of the water is lost to the atmosphere, which in such water sensitive areas is having huge environmental ramifications that are really now starting to be felt in these areas. So we need to be looking at new sources to actually start to source these raw materials that the economy needs responsibly. So technology has improved a lot in the last couple of years and you can now directly extract lithium from fluids such as geothermal waters. And that's what we're looking to do down in Cornwall, besides the fact that you also can't rely on solar evaporation because it rains far too much. But this is a lot more efficient. Just aware of time. So lithium as an element isn't that rare, but finding it in places where it's concentrated enough to make it economically viable to actually extract it is a bit more difficult. In Cornwall, we've got a uh, lithium enriched granite. So there was a report done by the US Geological Survey a couple of years ago when lithium was moved onto the US critical raw materials list. And it just highlights that you know, there is lithium in Cornwall, which is great. And as I said a second ago, it's the granite that is the source of the lithium. So lithium's found within mica minerals in this granite batholith. Now, Cornwall's right down in the southwest of the UK, it's the pokey out bit and the topographic highs in the area are formed from granite, but that's not just where the granite is, it's a bit like the Loch Ness Monster, in that it's all joined up underneath, so that's what this big red mass is showing. Cornwall has this amazing mining heritage, so for thousands of years we've actually mined tin and copper there. In the 1850s, the square mile where we're going to be drilling for lithium in a couple of weeks' time was actually the richest square mile in the world because of its copper production. And from an exploration point of view, that's fantastic because we've got this amazing data. We've actually got a digital archivist who works with us and we've got mineral agreements in place to explore for lithium and geothermal waters. And it's given us access to some archives that have been kind of locked up in these grand family attics for 200 years. And they'll be hand painted on vellum and six foot by six foot. And we can't put them through the scanner. So he'll go in and he'll take photos of it and we stitch them together digitally. And then our team of geologists can catch that information in 2D and 3D. So we're building up this big 3D model of the geology, mineralization and structures. And we're using that combined with kind of modern day exploration to actually target where we want these boreholes. And in these deep mines in Cornwall, historically, they had real problems with the mines filling up with water. So there are engine houses all over the county. If you ever seen Poldark, you'll have seen them. And um, they're pumping out the water. And this water was actually really quite hot. And so a lot of work was done in the 19th century and the turn of the 20th century to actually understand what these hot springs were. And this is great. So this is from a paper written in 1864 by Professor Miller of King's College in London. And he looks at the geochemistry of one of these hot springs. And he basically says, this could be a potential source of lithium if only we had a use for it. So <laughs> fast forward 150 years and here we are. Just, oh, this is some of the detail. So that's that section there, that top bit. Look, you can see all these tiny little stick men. And if we zoom in, one's running away with a wheelbarrow, the other's swinging a punch. It's great. <laughs> so what are we doing? We're looking for lithium within the geothermal waters. Unlike the Glasgow shallow mine water geothermal that we were just talking about, we actually want to avoid water that's been in old mine workings because it's contaminated with heavy metals and stuff like that. So we are actually targeting drilling a good, a good amount below those. We want to drill into these permeable geological structures. The granite itself really isn't that permeable. So it's in these big fault zones that cut across the county that there is actually the permeability that these fluids flow. We've got a fairly high confidence that these fluids are there. A, because of the historical data suggesting that there were hot springs all across the county. And B, because the deep geothermal project's half a mile down the road and they intercepted a lot of hot fluids as they've been drilling down to 5.2 kilometers. Very aware of time, so I'm gonna zoom through. Cornwall's got hot rocks underneath it. It's the granite. It's also got the lithium in it. And that's just to give you an idea of the scale that the deep geothermal project has just drilled down to. They're expecting temperatures of about 170 to 190 degrees C when they actually start production tests later on. 
So there we go. Lithium is going to play a vital role in this transition to a decarbonised future. The UK government's actually now recognising that maybe if we want to have an electric vehicle industry and we want to have batteries and renewable energy, maybe we need to start thinking about where the raw materials might come from for that as well. And we think there's real potential for it in Cornwall. So thank you very much. <laughs>